In this video, I'm going to talk about juniper. Juniper species are both endemic to Europe and Northern America. And uh, when I was living and working in Europe, I liked juniper. I used to dry it for incense, and I thought I kind of knew it. And it wasn't until I got to northern New Mexico that I really started to get to know juniper a little bit more. And the reason for that is because both my son Ja and I live on land where the two dominant tree species are pinyon pine and juniper. So I'm on Jar's land at the moment. Yesterday we were harvesting juni juniper for a distillation and it was interesting because Jar's a botanist and so we botanized the three species on his land. One of them I haven't got an example of, it's higher up on the land and it's alligator juniper which has this alligator-like scale for its bark. And then the other two, uh, these two, so this one is a uh, mountain juniper and this one is one seed juniper. And they do look a little bit different. Um, the one seed juniper has less um, twiggy branches and its branch, you can see more of the red that you see in the bark of juniper, often on the tree trunk, but here we're seeing it in the actual um, little branchlet. They both smell very different as well. The um, I have to say that the one seed juniper is beautifully aromatic, much deeper, denser, and stronger, more intense than the mountain juniper. However, we have had a beautiful, successful distillations of the mountain juniper too, so both are aromatic. So what about juniper? Well, first of all, juniper outruns or beats any of the other conifers in northern New Mexico for its hardiness in terms of drought resistant environment. And this has been highlighted by studies on juniper. And pinyon is already extremely drought resistant and does really well on these dry uh, northern um, high desert lands. But juniper outwins it every time. And I just wanted to talk a little bit of, about how it does that. So if you think of your tree trunk and the roots going into the earth, there are um, there's a canal called the Ixilem. And that's the canal that brings um, water and other elements from the earth up the tree into other parts of the tree, into the, the branches and the, the leaves or the needles in the case of juniper. And in very drought areas, or sorry, should I say, in areas where there's a lot of drought, what can often happen, which is nefast for the tree, is that um, this vacuum that's created to, or it's a semi-vacuum, to bring the water and the elements up into the tree, um, pulls it up like an elastic band in a way. And the exilum tends to stretch like an elastic band. And often, because of the drought, it'll it'll split like an elastic band, it'll break. And when it breaks, air bubbles get in. And so instead of the tree receiving these precious amounts of water that the, the roots have been able to extract from the soil, it's getting air, which is not going to help it. And then obviously the drought will affect that tree. What juniper does, which is brilliant, is that it actually structurally alters its um, exilem, making it woodier. There's more linen in the exilim. So when the elastic band effect happens, it doesn't break. And so every ounce or every drop of that precious water gets to the juniper. And that's how it outwins all these other conifers in the high desert. So that's really um, one of its strengths. I've been looking at juniper in terms of the ethnobotanical um, history of juniper. And it's interesting because juniper all over Europe has been th thought of as a very sacred tree, especially in Germany. It's interesting because when I was living in um, Europe, I loved working with the elder tree. And the Germans saw the elder tree. It had this mother spirit with it. You had to ask if you wanted to use it. You should never cut it down or burn it or you'd be, you know, You'd be damned for forever. And they, they have the same story around juniper. It's thought of as a very benevolent tree and used for warding off evil spirits, used for protection. In Germany, they use it a lot for um, 
cremation. So they'll burn it at a cremation. They'll use it if they're taking a body from the crematorium to the cemetery. They'll lie it on the floor. So it's got a lot to do with um, purification. They use it to purify rooms that somebody's died in. And this idea of death is also to do with the fact that it's a evergreen, so it doesn't lose its needles. And this idea of the evergreen trees um, take you into eternity when you die. The other fun little thing about um, juniper in Italy, um, they used to hang it on the door to prevent witches coming in. And the reason was this, because the witches had to count every needle on the juniper branch and they couldn't do it before daylight. And because witches don't like to be there in daylight, they had to leave. Um, So there are lots of fun things, but it's all around protection and uh, cleansing I personally love using juniper um, as a hydrosol and um, as an incense. So as an incense, I'll dry the berries and the needles and, of course, burn it for cleansing a room um, or for making a nice smell. But the hydrosol is really good in the bath. So you pour a couple of tablespoons of hydrosol of juniper in the bath and it gets a circulation going. You could put it in bath salts and do the same thing. Juniper medicinally throughout the old herbals in Europe has been mainly used for um, stomach problems, intestinal problems, wound healing, and that's because of the aromatics. The aromatics are what actually, um, the terpenes in the aromatics are what actually make juniper um, antibacterial, anti-infectious. So that was used externally for wounds, also internally. So for um, lung infections, stomach infections, and as a diuretic. Um, It's really interesting because, you know, as we've just talked about, juniper knows how to take every little drop of water and get it circulating so it gets to where it needs to get to in the plant. Well, as a diuretic, it gets things moving as well. And the anti-infectious action from the terpenes also will help in bladder infections. And lastly, the way now that I see juniper, I didn't when I was living in Europe, but um, by living with it and uh, reading more about it, I understand that um, it's a very heating plant. I always used to think because of its diuretic use, it was more watery and therefore cooling. But no, do not use juniper if you already got a, a, an inflammati- inflammation or something heating going on, you want to cool it down. But do use juniper in the winter months um, to get phlegm moving, to heat up the digestive system, just to heat up the whole organism in a lovely uh, herbal tea or incense, or as I said, in the bath. So just remember, juniper is like fire. It heats, it doesn't cool.